What's up? This is Richie from the Where We Wild YouTube channel. And today I just wanted to share my morning coffee with you and talk a little bit about the bait that has produced the most fish for me this year by far. And that bait is the chatter bait. Let's get into it. Morning. So I woke up this morning and I was thinking, man, you know, we do a lot of videos on this channel where uh, we talk about camping education and camping gear and camping tips and tricks and stuff like that. And people seem to really enjoy those videos and we enjoy making them. But then it occurred to me that, you know, fishing is such a big part of my life and such a big part of this channel. It has been since I was three years old and I was you know, I got addicted to fishing through catching bluegill on night crawlers with bobbers, you know, at like age three when my dad would take me out there and it just evolved my entire life into uh, just pretty much being obsessed with bass fishing mostly. So over the years, I've acquired a lot of uh, techniques and, and a lot of knowledge about this stuff. And I just thought maybe you would dig it uh, if I shared, shared that with you. So I'm just having my morning coffee. I got some stuff out here. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about the chatterbait, man. It is just a moneymaker, especially for me this year. I mean, it's been mostly finesse out here. It's so pressured, you gotta fish slow, the water is super clear, but this year it changed. It just changed up. The weather was colder, it got rainy for the first time out here in California. Like, all winter it rained, which was insane. I haven't seen that since I moved out here. Water got muddy, water got cold. It was just a different thing, man. And a lot of guys, you know, they, they were just like refusing to put away their finesse gear and they just weren't weren't catching fish. It's too hard, they're not eating, the water's too muddy, it's too cold, it's too this, and I just, I can't accept that. They gotta be eating something. So I started to just experiment a little bit. What else do I have in my arsenal is gonna, is gonna get me bit out here? So since early February of this past year, I've been on chatter baits and spinner baits. Very similar. You know, you got the skirt, you got blades, you got flash, you got vibration, and uh, the chatterbait has emerged as just such a money maker for me, man. And it's and it's a big bite bait. It produces quality fish. Everyone I've caught this year on it has been a chunker. You know, just really solid quality fish out here. So just wanted to take a minute. I'm gonna try to keep this short and sweet. Um, I, I can go on for hours when it comes to fishing, so hopefully I don't lose my mind here and we'll just get to the point. But um, yeah, if you're not fishing a chatterbait, man, you're missing out. So let, let's get into this real fast. First and foremost, what is a chatterbait? If you don't know, it's basically just a bladed jig. It's got the blade on there. And what this blade does is it just displaces the water. And as it comes through, this blade just shakes and it, you know, catches the water and it just sends out vibration, shakes the bait back and forth real quick, gives you a little noise, gives you a little vibration, like I said. And uh, you know, you can blast it through grass, you can you know, work it on the bottom, work it through the middle, work it along the top real fast. So what kind of bait should you get? What, what chatterbait should you buy? Obviously, it's gonna be Z-Man. All day, they own the chatterbait, that is it. I, that's all I'm gonna throw is a Z-Man chatterbait, by far. So they got a bunch of different kinds. You can start out at $5 and get the Z-Man original chatterbait. I think I have one laying around right here. $5, catch his fish all good if you want to go up to their high end you're going to go with the evergreen jackhammer they're 16 dollars each i have a little hard time spending 16 dollars on on one chatterbait i'll be honest with you so i tried to find a middle ground and i landed on the custom the z-man custom chatterbait and they're pretty sick man they come in really nice colors the bait starts up you know and i'm kind of depressed right now because they seem to be on closeout on tackle warehouse for like five dollars and change like almost six bucks so i hope they don't stop making them because they've absolutely killed them for me and for six bucks i mean that's that's pretty sweet you know like why aren't you throwing the jackhammer because i'm catching them on the one that costs six dollars and i'm killing them on it so why you know what i mean like if it ain't broke don't fix it but obviously the jackhammer you know for 16 bucks that's pretty much the best of the best. It's gonna start earlier, it's gonna give you more vibration, it's just a better put together quality bait. But you know, if you don't like spending that type of money on the baits, I completely relate to that, I completely understand that. So if you're more budget minded and budget oriented, the Z-Man Custom catches fish. If they stop making those, I may be in trouble and I might have to switch uh, 
switch up to that jackhammer and spend some more coin on that. But for now, I'm throwing the custom. And uh, I have buddies that swear by the Elite, the Z-Man Elite Chatterbait, very similar to the custom, so you can go there too. But yeah, man, you, you're gonna catch one on, on any of these if, if you put the time into it. They're just great. So what size Chatterbait? Let's talk about size for a second. 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm going 3 8 ounce and a 4 aught hook. That's when I'm throwing the majority of the time. If I want to downsize a little bit, I will go with a, a quarter ounce. If you're running a little lighter line, you don't want it to sink down as fast, whatever it is, quarter ounce is a good way to go. But for the majority of people, the majority of the time, 3 8 ounce is where it's at. You can go up to a half ounce. If you want a little further casting distance, you gotta drop it down even further. You know, whatever reasons you may have, but bread and butter, 3 8 and uh, four out hook. That's pretty much what I'm going with. Now, depending on what situation you're in, what you're trying to mimic, or what kind of weather you're dealing with, water clarity, that's gonna dictate what chatterbait you should be using. There's so many things, man. There's so many There's so many factors involved when it comes to picking out colors and, and type of baits and stuff like that. So I'll just kind of give you an example of what I would pick in this situation. So you know they're feeding on shad, okay? You're trying to mimic shad. If it's a beautiful, sunny type of day and you're looking for flash, you know you're gonna go with that silver. Clear water, you know, um, you're gonna go with that that shad color with the silver. If the, if the water is muddier, you're gonna go, and, and it's still nice and bright outside, you're gonna go maybe silver blade with a little white and chartreuse just to get a little extra attention on it. If it's cloudy and the water is still muddy, and they're still feeding on shad, I'm gonna go with the white and chartreuse, but I'm gonna go with the gold blade on a real overcast day. You know, it's just depending on what situation you're in, you can pretty much just dial it in to every situation. If I think they're feeding on bluegill, I'm gonna go with a bluegill pattern. If it's cloudy out, I'm going with the gold blade. If it's sunny out, I'm going with a silver blade. If it's getting dark out, early in the morning, sunset, you know, they're not hitting on the uh, the normal shad pattern bait, this type of color here. I'm gonna switch over to a black one. Try to, uh, you know, get even more contrast going as it gets dark, like simple stuff like that. Um, you, you really wanna just kind of match what's going on in that moment, have a lot of situational awareness. What are they feeding on? What's the sun doing? What's the water clarity? You know, all that stuff plays a big role in what bait you're, you're gonna be picking. If it's springtime and you're matching up crawfish, then you're gonna pull out your, your bright red and throw on a crawfish trailer. But the majority of the time, I'm, I'm mimicking bait fish with a chatterbait, 99% of the time. So let's talk about trailers. Trailers are super important, man. Even more important, I think, than the actual chatterbait you're using to me. I mean, I think it's all about the trailer. If you don't get the trailer right, if it's got the wrong action, you know, it's, uh, it's not gonna produce for you the way a good trailer would. So in my opinion, the absolute best trailer out there for a chatterbait is the Hog Farmer Spunk Shat. By far is, is my favorite. It's basically like a, a Kai Tech, right? But it doesn't have the paddle tail here. It's got that real thin tail on the end. And that makes all the difference to me, man. Uh, I really think that uh, I mean, you can use paddle tails. I know a lot of guys who do, but there's just something about this uh, spunk shad that gets it done. It's really sweet. So if I'm throwing a shad pattern, I'm throwing a shad pattern trailer. If I'm throwing a bluegill pattern, I'm throwing a bluegill pattern trailer. It's just, you know, you're just matching your bait, you're matching your hatch. All right, so how do you put your trailer on? You basically just wanna run the hook through the top and the back of the bait and you want it to come out of the back of the bait. So when it's sitting up like this, the back of the bait is facing up. You don't want it to come through the belly. So you got the little keeper on there. And I'm just gonna hook right through the top. Try to center it. Little centering pin right through the middle there. And you're just gonna kinda eyeball it and you want it as straight as you can possibly get it. And it might take you a minute to get that skirt out of the way and just figure out where you need to be. But usually it works the best if you just get up to the bend of the hook 
and then pull it through. And the spunk shed has that little, that's money, that spunk shed has the little groove in the back. And that's where you want to center that hook out. And that's what it's going to look like right there. And you want it straight, man. You don't want that bait, you don't want that trailer to have a big bend in it. You want it as straight as possible. Look at that thing. How it just goes back and forth like that right in the air. But you see how, how straight that is. And like that's money right there. The way this thing looks, you, you got the right colors. Everything's matching up. Shad pattern. So this one is the electric shad. Spunk shad trailer. If I'm throwing a bluegill bait, I think this pattern's called sunfish, spunk sunfish. What is it? Spunk shad, yeah, sunfish. So I got my, my bluegill sunfish type of chatterbait, and look how I match that trailer up, man. It's almost dead on with that color profile on both of these. Almost dead on. Like, that's, that's beautiful. And that's what you want to do. You really want to match that trailer to match your bait as best as you can. Gold blade, silver blade. I mean, everything plays a part, dude. Everything plays a part. And like I said, you know, if I'm throwing a black color, when it gets real low light situations, I'll go with this ghost gill. And it's got black, silver, blue. It's like the perfect matching trailer to a black bait. Still got a little bit of clearness to it. It's not completely solid black, but that is a bad combination right there, man. You can see how those match up and looks really good. Let's talk about how I work them real fast. I mean, it's, it's pretty basic, you know, you just pretty much can cast them out and reel them in. Um, but what I like to do is I like to mix up speeds, mix up the cadence, um, just try to cause a reaction bite. So depending on where I think the grass is, you know, you're gonna get hung up and you're gonna be pulling through the grass. So sometimes I'll, I'll try to get it right above it. Sometimes I'll sink it all the way down into it, try to bust it through it. But it's all about changing the speeds for me. So depending on how active I think they are, you know, or how willing they are to chase stuff, you know, that'll dictate the speed at which I'm cranking this thing in. So Every time I change the, the cadence or speed, that usually really does trigger bites. So like if I'm, I'm fishing it slower, real slow type of day, I can tell it's real slow. I'll cast out, I'll let it drop down. I'll just slowly drag it back, take up my slack. Slowly drag it back, take up my slack. Slowly drag it back, crank, crank. Two little cranks in there just to switch it up. And if something's been following it on those two slow drags, at the end of that third drag, if I bang, bang, they can't, they got to make a choice right there. They got to figure out, all right, do I, am I, am I going to lose this thing or do I need to attack it right now? And so that pretty much is, is how I, I cause a reaction bite with this stuff. That's on the slow days when I'm working this bait really slow. If I think they're more active, I'll crank it up a little bit. So I'll cast out, I'll let it drop down a little bit and I'll just randomly mess with the speeds, you know, and the cadence and everything. So I'll, you know, I'll cast it out, let it drop down a little bit, crank, 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 stop. Crank, 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 stop. Crank, crank, stop. Crank, 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 stop. Crank, crank, stop. Like it's just play with it. And uh, you know, the last couple of fish that I caught, it was the same type of pattern. So it was like one, two, three, four, stop. One, two, three, four, stop. Here we go. Nice, dude. There you go right there. Chatterbait fish, good one. A lot of times they'll hit it on the stop and uh, sometimes they'll hit it on the move, but for the most part, I've noticed that a lot of times it comes on that stop. So you're cranking in, boom, boom, boom. Crank, 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 stop. Crank, crank, stop. Crank, 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 stop. Boom. That's when you'll feel a little a little hit and the hits are really odd too man i mean if they hit it on the move it's just a stop you just feel the bait stop that's what it feels like so it can be tricky especially when you're fishing in grass you'll get used to it like i lost the fish last time because i didn't set the hook because i thought i was just hitting grass again the bait just kind of locked up on me and stopped and i just started to slowly pull back to get it through the grass 
but then my line started running around and I had a fish on and I, and I lost him because I didn't, I didn't swing. So always swing when the chatterbait stops. That's all, it's, you just, boom, it just stops. Whether you're hung up or whether you got a fish, you got a 50-50 chance, just swing and just be careful. Try to, try to swing to one side of your body. Don't swing right at you because if you are just hitting grass and that bait comes blasting through the grass and comes shooting at your face, that can be really dangerous. Speaking of, always wear sunglasses when you're fishing if you can. A, it helps you look through the water better, protects your eyes from the sun, but it also protects your eyes if a bait comes flying back at your face. You get hooked in the chin with one of these things, it's not gonna feel good, you know? But you're gonna be all right. You get hooked in the eye, I don't know what they're gonna be able to do for you, man. That's not gonna be pretty, so protect your eyes out there. I say that to Jamie all the time. I'm like, babe, you, you need to throw some sunglasses on. Like, you know, that bait comes flying back at you and hits you in the eye. There's not gonna be much I can do for you. You know, anywhere else you can take a hook out, but your eye, ugh, I don't, I don't want any part of that, so. But yeah, man, you know, that bait just stops. And so you gotta swing. Whether it's a fish or it's grass, just swing. But just be mindful that that bait can come flying back at you really fast. And I was using a black chatter bait last time at sunset and I could barely see the thing. You know, I launched it out of the grass and it was soaring at me. I could barely see it in time. So just be very mindful and be careful about that. But it's just such a, such a fun bite, dude. And it's just so effective. I've been mostly power fishing this year using the chatterbait, the spinnerbait, stuff like that. And I've been catching a much better quality fish consistently. Like every time, chunkers, fat bellies. And uh, yeah, it's just one of those baits that, that produces quality fish. So Z-Man chatterbaits with spunk shad trailers, baby. That is where it's at. If you're not throwing one of these, I don't care where you are, what time of year, doesn't matter, man. Whatever water conditions, this bait, you, you can figure it out and just dial them in, dude. Dial them. I'll link all this stuff in the description. Like I said, they might be uh, closing out these custom chatter baits, uh, which breaks my heart, but uh, yeah, regardless, Z-Man makes the best chatter bait around and yeah, dude. That probably went a little longer than I, uh, I would have wanted, but, and I've neglected my coffee this whole time, and now it's a bit cold, but hey, we got to talk about fishing this morning, didn't we? So, can't beat that. I could talk for hours about fishing, man. I just, I absolutely love it, and that's the thing, man. You know, people who aren't into fishing, you know, they think maybe it's boring, or it's like, whatever, you know, lazy and stuff. And uh, it's like a video I posted on our Instagram a couple weeks ago. It's so dead on, man. I mean, it, it says like, uh, there's just hundreds and thousands of different choices and, uh, you know, decisions that you have to make to dial this stuff in. And, and that's, that's the challenge of it. And that's what's so fun to me about it, man. It's like, you can go nuts just trying to figure it out for yourself and, and dial it in as much as you can and catch fish when other guys aren't catching them because you made certain decisions uh, that, that they didn't make, you know? So I hope you got something out of this, man. I, I don't know if this is gonna become a thing where I have some coffee in the morning and, and talk about my favorite bait at the moment or, or talk about stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. Let me know if you enjoy this. We'll see what happens, man. I, I just am really passionate about fishing. A lot of you know that. It's a huge part of my life. And I'd like to share that with you guys, you know? I, if you're just starting, you know, and, and even if you have stuff that you can tell me, this chatterbait works better than this one. I like this trailer. I like this. This one works the best. Why? This, that, this. Leave it in the comments. I love reading that stuff. I love talking to you guys about that stuff. I can talk fishing forever. So don't be shy. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like. And if you're into this sort of thing, don't forget to hit subscribe. We put a new video out every single week. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Later. If you want to see more videos just like this one, be sure to check out the rest of the Where We Wild YouTube channel, where we post a brand new video every week. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified whenever we post a new adventure. Thanks for watching. See ya.